If you want to build a WordPress website, this tutorial is going to walk you through one of the fastest and easiest ways of building a WordPress website. I'm Tim from RealWebsiteHints.com, and it's my mission to help you find the best and easiest ways of building websites. In this tutorial, we're going to be using the Beaver Builder theme and plugin. Beaver Builder is a high quality, intuitive WordPress theme. It's easy to use and perfect for anyone who wants to design layouts and web pages with the minimum amount of frustration. I'm going to help walk you through step by step from the beginning how to build your WordPress website. I've included sponsored links to Beaver Builder and all of the tools used in this video in the description below. If you want to learn more about the Beaver Builder plugin and theme, you can head over to realwebsitehints.com slash beaver. I've also got a full table of contents that you'll find in the description below so you can skip ahead or easily come back to the parts that you need to work on. If you don't already have website hosting, click on the eye icon at the top of the screen or look in the description below for my tutorial on how to set up and install WordPress correctly with a quality hosting company. You'll need to do that first before starting this tutorial. If you're all set and already have WordPress installed, let's go ahead and get started. In this tutorial series, we're going to look at making a website that's in line with the current design trends. And here's some examples uh, on the Beaver Builder webpage and the Beaver Builder theme and plugin is what we're going to use to build our website in this tutorial series. So you can see we've got some great looking designs here. And um, these designs are definitely in line with the current design trends. So if we look at like Apple's website, we've got this like nice, clean look to their website. Uh, if you want something more dynamic, there's the Airbnb website, and you can definitely do something very similar to this using the build, Beaver Builder theme and Beaver Builder plugin. If you've got a business, you know, when you want to talk more about the benefits of your business and what it can offer to your customers, you, know, you can do something like Mint.com, and this is definitely the kind of look um, that's achievable with the Beaver Builder theme and Beaver Builder plugin. And of course, you're not limited to these looks. These are just some examples. Um, this is the exact website that we're going to make in this tutorial series right here. So, you know, great, great looking website. I made this um, a little bit of a darker themed website just because I thought it would be kind of, you know, fun to do. But you can see you can get some, you know, really great design looks. But if you don't like the darker look, of course, you know, the design is up to you. Here's another example uh, that I made with the Beaver Builder theme and Beaver Builder plugin of, you know, sort of a light um, hotel example uh, website. And then this transparent background, this isn't actually something that's part of the Beaver Builder theme natively. It's something that um, I actually got some help from the support team at uh, Beaver Builder to do. And I'm definitely going to show you how to do that in this tutorial series. So here's an example on the site that we're going to build of the clear clear header there. What's really great about using Beaver Builder with WordPress is that you're able to use the flexibility and expandability of WordPress to add just about any kind of functionality that you need, from an online store to more tailored functions uh, specific for your website. And what I really like about uh, Beaver Builder is that it's easy to use. Um, a lot of other page builder websites, uh, you know, this is the, this is where you edit your website. It's here on the back end of your WordPress thing, and it's easy to use. And I do like them. And there's a, a lot of great benefits to building your website um, with a back end builder like this. But I find it takes a lot of time because you know if you're working on a website like this you're designing it you're you know you're adding your functions you're moving things around for example and then if you want to see it you've got to click update here and then you click on view page and then your page loads and the changes that you make show up so let's go and see what, how you edit it with beaver builder with beaver builder simply click on it and you click on the page builder button up here and now we're editing our website here live. So if I want to change the text here, just simply click on this. I can drag this little window around, and I can change this text. And then click Save. And then to you know complete my transaction, really view exactly what it's going to look like on the front end, you just click Done here, and then Publish Changes. You can see how much quicker it is to work on your website when you can see the changes as you're making them and not have to go back and forth from the back end of your website to the front end of your website and back again. The Beaver Builder uh, plugin and theme also have really uh, good code. And I know a lot of people ask me about what does it look like if you deactivate the plugin. On another page builder, this is the Aveda example here. So this is the this is the front end of the website. And then if you deactivate the theme, this is what it winds up looking like. So you get all of this sort of code here, not really a usable uh, page if you have to deactivate the theme for some reason. And then with Beaver Builder, that same page that I made, this page here, this is what it looks like when you deactivate the plugin. So it's still a usable page. To me, I don't really think it's that big of a deal because I think that um, either way, this is still not the page that I wanted to make. You know, um, 
but it's definitely still a usable page. So if you have to deactivate it for some reason, your users are not going to be, you know, totally out. Uh, but definitely you can see, you know, sort of see the, the clean code of the Beaver Builder theme. Another great thing about Beaver Builder is that it reduces your frustration. Uh, they've got a great support team, and I was able to experience using their support team when I was building and testing this out. And I found that you know they were able to get back to me within a matter of just a few hours, um, which was you know really great and really helpful when you're trying to just get something done to have support team that's that responsive. So they say that their response time is normally within a few hours um, and definitely within a day. So I found that that you know was was really useful and really helpful in helping me get my website built and done. And support is, you know, part of what you get when you pay the money for this premium theme. Beaver Builder is a premium WordPress theme and plugin. It does cost more money than other WordPress themes and plugins. I feel that if you want to make a WordPress website and you want to save yourself time and frustration, it's well worth the additional cost. It's easy to use and it's intuitive and you can see that the front end page builder will absolutely save you some time. So the final thing I want to cover um, is that the plugin alone will work with just about any WordPress theme. But in my experience, testing this plugin with other themes is that you can't really take full advantage of the design capabilities unless you use their theme and plugin together. So I highly recommend keep yourself uh, from frustration and make your building your website as easy as possible that you go ahead and get both the theme and the plugin together. So that was a look at where we're going in this tutorial and what Beaver Builder is all about. Next, we're going to install the Beaver Builder theme. In this section, we're going to install the Beaver Builder theme and Beaver Builder plugin. I recommend you use both of them together just to save yourself time and frustration. If you haven't gotten the Beaver Builder theme and plugin yet, you can always use the sponsored links below or you can head over to realwebsitehints.com slash beaver. So let's get Beaver Builder installed. So installing a theme or a plugin into WordPress is actually pretty straightforward. The main thing to remember is that if you buy a premium theme or plugin, after you've downloaded it from the company that you've purchased it from, you want to make sure that it stays as a zip file. Because if it doesn't stay as a zip file, then it's not going to be able to upload in the standard way into WordPress. So go ahead and log into the back end of your site. Usually the back end of your site, you can find it by going to your URL slash WP admin, and then just go ahead and log in. So in this uh, particular installation, I've already cleaned up WordPress and gotten everything set up. Um, if you haven't done that already, if you haven't installed WordPress or don't have hosting, you can just go ahead and click on the little eye icon at the top of the screen and I'll show you how to set up hosting and how to set up WordPress and make sure everything's configured properly. So then go ahead and just log into your Beaver Builder account and then go to Downloads and Orders. And then you're going to want to download uh, the pro version of the plugin and the Beaver Builder theme to your computer. So just go ahead and click on those so they download. And then just remember where you save them. In my case, I save them to the downloads folder. And you also want to be sure the files stay zipped on your computer because you have to upload them as zipped files to your WordPress website in order for it to work. And we can just go back to our website here. And we'll start by installing the theme first. So if you go to appearances in your dashboard and then themes, click on add new at the top and then click on upload theme and do choose file and then we're going to click on the beaver builder theme because that's what we want to install and then click on install now and there we go so now it's been installed and we just need to activate it to make it our default theme and there we go so now the theme has been installed and it's ready to be used and customized and in the next video we're going to go ahead and customize the settings for this and the next thing to do is to install the Beaver Builder uh, Page Builder plugin, which we're going to use to build and design our pages. So we're going to go over to Plugins and then click on Add New here, or you can just click on Plugins here and then click Add New at the top, and then click Upload Plugin, and then go to Choose File, then click on the Beaver Builder plugin zip file and click on Install Now, and then do Activate Plugin. And there we go. So now we've got the Beaver Builder plugin um, installed and we've got the Beaver Builder theme installed. And then the final thing that we need to do to activate our theme and our plugin is to add in our license code uh, for the plugin. And so to add in our license code, we'll just go over here to settings and then page builder. So this is a new item that was added as part of the plugin and just click on that. And then under license, click on enter license key and then go back over to your Beaver Builder account and we're, we're here where it says license key Let's go ahead and copy that key and then paste it into your site and then do save license key and now you'll be able to get all of the updates uh, that Beaver Builder makes to 
this plugin. And so that's it for installing a premium WordPress theme and plugin. Now that we have Beaver Builder installed, the next thing that we need to do is to configure our theme to get the basic look and feel of our site. And we're gonna do that in the next section. I find that no matter what website tool you're using, one of the most important things you can do to get started building your website and make everything go as quickly as possible is to set up the theme and set up your basic colors. And that's what we're gonna do in this section. Let's start by configuring the basic settings for the Beaver Builder plugin. So from the dashboard of your website, go to settings and then page builder. And this was the setting that was added by the Beaver Builder page builder plugin. And then the one thing that I like to do on here is to go over to post types and then click on posts here. And that's going to make it so that we can use the Beaver Builder page builder to also build our posts as well as our pages. And then go ahead and click on save post types. Now let's go and adjust the basic look of our site with the theme settings. So there's uh, two places where we can do that, and uh, the Beaver Builder theme uses the WordPress customize function. So you can either go to appearance, customize here, and that will take you to it. Or if you're on the um, front end of your website doing something already and you want to customize something, you can just click on the customize button up here. So the first thing I like to do is I like to add the logo of my website so I can see how the logo is going to look with all the other changes that I make. So to add the logo, we go to header, and we go to header logo, and then we uh, want to choose an image, and then we're going to go ahead and select an image. We're going to upload an image file, and then we're going to use this fire and effects logo right here, and uh, this is the logo that I created for this fictitious company. We go ahead and do choose image. So there we go, and now you can see that it's changed up here to the logo of our image. And that's the great thing about this um, new WordPress customizer functionality is that um, the themes that use this functionality allows you to have this sort of instant preview of what the changes that you've made um, are going to look like. Now I have found, um, just so you know, it seems to work really well with the Beaver Builder theme, but other themes, if you're using the customize function, you might not see the changes happening here, even though they really have changed. So you just do save and publish, and then close out of it, and then you can just you know, see whether the change actually took effect. So let's go ahead and just save that change there by clicking save and publish at the top. And this logo here, um, I made it 150 picks by 50 picks. Uh, tall, so 150 picks wide by 50 picks tall, and the size of the logo that you upload is going to have an effect on the size of your menu and um, header section here, so do keep that in mind. So now let's go back, and we're just going to go through um, the settings one by one. Um, we've got these presets here, and um, sort of a, it, it's one way of getting an idea of the different kind of looks that you can get for your website. It's going to show some of the things, you know, like, so this is one of the menu structures you can do where you've got your logo up here, um, a text area here, and then the menu down below. This one here's got the um, logo in the center and then the menu down below. So this is just, you know, you can sort of click through these, see different um, varieties of the menu settings. Um, but I like to do my own, my own settings, so we're just going to set this back to default. Um, do be really careful with this preset settings, because if you change any settings down here and then adjust the preset, it's going to erase all of the changes that you made down here. So do keep that in mind. So let's go over to the General tab. And um, let's go ahead and change the background color. So for this site, I wanted to have that dark color look, so I'm just going to change it to black, which is the hex code of 0000. And we can do Save and Publish. You don't have to do Save and Publish every time. Um, I just like to do it just so that I, I don't get distracted and go to something else and then forget to save changes and have a bunch of changes that I've added in and not have them be saved. Now for the accent color, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the color from this uh, logo here so that it matches, um, so that the text over here matches the logo and sort of the highlight colors like these down here match the logo. And I've got a quick tutorial that will show you how to do that. Um, if you click on the little card or the eye icon at the top of the screen, it will um, take you to that tutorial on how to find the hex code for any image. So I've already got the hex code for this. So I'm just going to paste that in here. So there you can go, you, you can already see that it's made a, a change there. Then we're going to change the hover color to the same color, just like they did in their example. Then do Save and Publish. And then we'll go back here to the general, and then do Headings. And then for the headings, um, we don't want this to be a dark color, because our website's going to be a dark color already. So we're going to change this to a light gray color. I'm going to use um, E8, E8, E8 for my light gray color. 
And I'm going to change the font family to uh, one of the Google fonts, which comes as part of the Beaver Builder theme already. It's really convenient. A lot of themes are doing that these days, and it really makes your life easy to have all these different um, great-looking fonts at your disposal. So I'm going to use the Lato theme here. And then I also like to make the font sizes of all of these um, a little bit bigger. So I'm going to adjust the font sizes up by four for all of these. Want to make you know the fonts easy to read for our for our viewers when they come to our site. Okay, I'm going to do save and publish. We'll go back, and then let's change the color of our text. So in the text color, I'm going to choose a slightly different color from the heading color. I'm just going to paste that in here. And now we can't see it right here because we haven't made the um, background of this section uh, black yet, but we're going to do that in just a minute. And again, let's uh, bump the font size up um, by, I think just two here is probably fine. And save and publish. Okay, now we can go back. And the header. So now the top bar layout um, is going to add a top bar up here, um, or we can choose where we, if we want to have text up there, text and social icons. We haven't configured the social icons yet, so they're not not showing up. Um, we can just have a menu up there. And in this particular example, I'm not going to use any of those, but if you wanted to have one or two columns of additional information at the top of your website, you could do that with the top bar um, layout, and then the top bar style will adjust the colors for that. Let's go ahead and look at the header layout. Um, I like this setup right here. We've got the navigation on the right and the logo on the left, but if you wanted to change that, you've got all of these options right here. I like to uh, bring the padding down for this to just 10. Um, that way the header and menu section of my website doesn't take up too much space. This is going to be the space along the top and along the bottom of the um, logo and your menu. This is going to be the padding, uh, heading section. And then if you want to keep your header um, at the top of the window all the time, so as your viewers scroll down, the menu is always there. Um, you've got these different options. You can either have it fade in, shrink, or fixed. Um, so that means it doesn't change the size. I like to have it shrink so it just gets a little bit smaller as uh, the viewers scroll down. So we're going to go ahead and set that, and then do Save and Publish. And now we're going to adjust the colors uh, for the header section. So we're going to use black for the colors, because that's the, the color that we're using for this menu. You can choose if you want to um, change the opacity, and so then as you scroll down, it's going to change the opacity. It won't, I think it actually does change the opacity um, up here, but if you have like, if you want to have that image look with the opacity, you can't just use this to get that in. Um, in a later video, I'll show you how you can accomplish that using some um, custom code. And then the text color, I'm going to make white, and then the link color, I'm going to make the same color as uh, I did with the, the text up there, the text and the logo. Go ahead and paste that in there. So now you can see that these uh, links up here are that color. And I'm going to change this uh, hover color to white. To white here. And now when we hover over, you can see that the, these turn white. It's a nice uh, contrast uh, in colors. Okay, and we'll do save and publish. We already did the header logo. And then we've got the um, navigation layout. So you can um, enable or disable the search search icon if you want to. Um, you can also have uh, the on mobile view. When the screens are smaller, you can choose to have either a menu button or the hamburger icon. The hamburger icon are those three lines that you get to sh um, as an icon to show what the menu is. So the settings are fine. And then finally, the nav style. I'm going to say set this uh, font to to Source Sans Pro. I'm going to just bump the font size up by two just to make it a little bit easier to read. Do save and publish there. And so you can see it's um, how important it is to just go through these settings first, get the colors that you want, and then you can you know, start to see your website taking place already just by having the right colors on there. And you know, I think I forgot something in the general here. I think under text, I also wanted to change the font to the Source Sans Pro just so that it all matches and looks nice. So go ahead and do that. There we go. So now we've got the header um, all set up. And then the content. So the content uh, background. Now this is going to be the background color for like your blog posts. Um, and if you've got, if you're using WooCommerce or some other plugin that has a specific um, 
content background type, it might also use this as the default background color. So for this, we want to use black because that's what this website's going to look like. And then we can do save and publish. And so here you can go. You can already see that this website is um, sort of getting transformed. And the blog layout, um, this actually happens to be the blog page because by default, WordPress starts your home page as a blog page. And we're going to change that um, in the next video. But one thing I don't like is um, how wide the default sidebar is. So I just want to change that from large to small. And then um, if you, for your blog posts, you have got these options here, whether you want the author visible, the date visible, or the, or the comment count visible. Let's go ahead and do save and publish. And then um, if you're using other post types, like if you're using the WooCommerce um, to create an online store, you can change the, the layout settings here for that. And then the footer is this section down here. Um, right now it's got this uh, Beaver Builder walkthrough attribute. Um, but if you don't want to uh, promote Beaver Builder on your website, which is completely understandable, um, you can actually, there's actually a really easy way to do that. And that is right here under footer layout. If you just start entering in some text here, you can see that it, um, you can see that it um, adds it to the footer of your website. So let's just go ahead and add in our copyright information here. And for the copyright symbol, if you want to add that in, you can use the ampersand, copy, and then semicolon, just like that. And then you can see that that uh, shows up down there. So let's go ahead and adjust the footer style. So we're going to make the background color a dark gray. The 33333 um, gray color. I'm going to change the text color to white, just so it's easy for our viewers to see. I'm going to change the link color to our default uh, color that we've been using from the logo here. I'm going to do the same thing with the hover color here too. Actually, I'm going to change the hover color to white for this. And we don't have any menu items down here, so there's no links showing up. But um, if we added a menu down here, which you can do, um, then the links would show up. Okay, and then we'll do save and publish. And then if you wanted to add widgets to the footer, you can do that, and this is how you would style those widgets. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm not going to cover the use of widgets, uh, but just so you know, that's where those settings are. And then the next thing we want to do is um, add in our social media icons, because a lot of people like to use social media, and it's a great way to promote your website and what you're doing. And so we to add the social links, you click on social links up here, and then we've got a choice of whether you want it to be monochrome, or branded, and so branded means that each of the icons is going to have the default color of that social media thing. So for example, Facebook is going to be blue, YouTube is going to be red. Um, I like the monochrome, it's going to use the highlight color uh, for our website. So you can either just uh, paste in your social media links just like this. Here's my Facebook link, real website hints, my Twitter link, real website hints, my YouTube link, which is down here at the bottom somewhere. And then if you just want to see what it looks like just for your for your own sake, you can actually just use a hash in here. So just like this. And that'll show, show up in the different sections where the social media icons are. So let's go ahead and add some social media icons to the footer so we can see the social media icons showing up. So to do that, just go to footer, footer layout. And then instead of choosing just text, if you choose um, text and social icons, it'll use this section here plus uh, the social icons, um, and it'll be centered. And if you wanted to add two columns, then you can choose um, what shows in column one and what shows in column two. So for this, I'm just going to use the one column. And then make sure you push Save and Publish up here, and then we can close out of this. And there we go. That's a quick look um, at how to adjust the settings for the Beaver Builder theme and Beaver Builder plugin. And you can see what a big difference that makes in the look of our website already. Now that we have Beaver Builder configured, we're going to get started building our homepage. It's time to start building our homepage. In this section, I'm going to walk you through step by step how to use the Beaver Builder page builder layout features and some cool tips and tricks that I figured out with Beaver Builder. So let's go ahead and start building our homepage. So the first thing we need to do on our dashboard is go to Pages, 
And then we need to create a home page. So I've already created a home page. I just made a basic page and then saved it with the name of home. And then we also um, should make a blog page. So let's go ahead and add a new page right now. So you can either click add pages over here by clicking add new under pages or we can click add new at the top up here. And then we're going to call this page blog. You might want to call it news or something else, but just something where you're going to put your posts on your page. And then all you have to do is just click publish. And then in the next settings, we're going to configure that blog page is going to automatically put the new posts that we create in the posts section on that page. So the next step is to go to settings and then reading. You can choose here to select a static front page. Or um, the second way of doing it is you can go over to Beaver Builder, and click on um, visit site, or actually, I'm sorry, it won't be Beaver Builder, it'll be the name of your website up here. Um, and then click on visit site, and if we click on customize, we can go over to settings, and we can click static front page. And this is the same setting over here, and we can click a static front page. So the front page, we're going to create that home page that we created. It's going to change that right there. And then our posts page, we're going to create that, use that blog page that we created. And now all of our blog posts will appear on this page. And we don't really have to do anything else. That will happen automatically when we create new blog posts. And we click Save and Publish at the top. And then we can close out of this. And then let's go back to our dashboard to edit that home page. There's actually two ways we could edit that home page. We can either go back to our, our dashboard and go to Pages, All Pages and then click on home here and then click on edit and we can do launch page builder we're already on the front of our website we can just go over here to where it says page builder um, and start editing our page right here so the way that the um, Beaver builder works and a lot of different WordPress page builders work is they give you these different rows and then you divide the different rows up into different columns so for this first row up here, I want to give it um, an image background. So to do that, you click on the little uh, wrench icon here to get to the row settings. And then we want to make sure that it's set to full width. And then the content width can be fixed. So that means that where you see these blue bars here, all of the content that we create will stay within those blue bars. But that the background that we're going to add to this will go for the full width of the window. So just scroll down. Um, under background type, select photo. And then you can go ahead and upload a photo. Go ahead and upload a file. And you want to make sure that the images that you select are web optimized um, and that they're a good size for this. So I'm using an 800 by 400 or 1440 uh, pixel picture here that's already been optimized. And I'm going to just do select photo. And there we go. Now you can see it's already um, the background for this section. You go ahead and click on save for that. And then in this uh, section here, I'm going to add some content. So we're going to add a title bar. And the title bar, so to add content using Beaver Builder, um, you just click the Add Content button up here. Then you select which kind of module you want to create. So the Headings module, which we're going to use for our title, is right here. We, all you got to do is just drag it in, and it's just that simple. So then you give your heading a name, so I'm just going to give it the name of the company. And then if you wanted that um, to be a link, you could select a link there. And then let's uh, change the alignment here to Center. Let's give it an H1 tag since it's probably going to be the most important thing on the site. And you can see uh, the changes that we're making are happening um, in real time as we make them. We can move this window around any place we want to um, within the window to make all of the changes that we want. And we're going to use the default font since we already selected that in our settings, but we want to change the size to a custom size. So for this, I'm going to um, choose 150 picks just to make sure it's nice and big. Oops, not 105, 150. There we go, that looks good. Okay, and then we want to also make a background for this text here so it's easier for our viewers to read since the background that I've chosen um, is fairly busy. So we're just going to click Save This. There we go. Okay, so there we go to Column Settings. Okay, and then just choose a background color. Um, just drag this uh, little circle around, or you can choose the specific color you want. I'm just going to use a dark gray color like that. And then obviously we want to be able to see what's behind it, since I've got that um, awesome picture that I took. Um, so to change that, we're just going to change the opacity here. Let's start it with uh, 50% and see what that looks like. And what I really like about the Beaver Builder uh, plugin is that you can see the changes right as you're making them. So I'm going to make it a little bit darker than that. Let's try 75%. And you know what, let's actually make this just full on black. There we go. Okay, and then just click on save up here. 
And then the next thing we're going to do is just add a little space uh, below this text here. So to do that, we're going to click on Add Content. And then we're going to add a separator right below that. And then you can choose um, how tall you want the separator to be. So I'm just going to make this one 15 pixels tall. And then we don't actually want to give it a color, so I'm just going to make the opacity 0. And we'll click Save. And then let's add another piece of content. So we're going to add a button. I'm going to add that button right below um, that separator that we put in. And then you can choose what you want your button to say by changing the text here. Have it say Learn More. If we wanted to have an icon, you could select an icon for that. But in this case, I don't want to have an icon. And then you'd add the link where you want the button to go. Um, if you don't have a place, if you don't have a link yet, if you haven't created the page for it yet, but you still want to be able to see what the button's going to look like, I recommend just putting a hash in um, just as a placeholder for that. And then we can choose the style for the button. Um, click uh, over here. I'd actually rather have a black button for this. So we're going to go ahead and select a black background color. And then if you wanted to have a different hover color, um, you could select that here. So you can make it just like a lighter gray, for example. So when somebody hovers over it, it gets to be a lighter gray. don't think it does it yet, but after we save this, it should do it. And then let's also make the button um, be centered. So click on Center. That's going to center it there on the page. And then let's make the button a little bit bigger. So I'm going to change the font size here. There we go. That's pretty good. And then if you wanted the corners uh, not to be round, if you wanted them to be square, you can just change this setting right here. And then click on Save. Let's let our audience know that there's more content to look at on this page down below by putting a little down arrow icon here. So to do that, we just click on Add Content. And then from Advanced Modules, select Icon, and then just drag the icon where you want it to be. So we'll just click it right there. And then just scroll up to the top here and select the icon that you want to use. So in this case, I want to use uh, this basic down arrow right here. And we can see it, it appeared right there. So we go to Style to change um, the position of it and the size. So let's make the size 75. Let's make it a little bit bigger even. Let's make it 100. And then we'll change the alignment to center. There we go. Now it just shows up right there in the middle of our page. And just click Save. So you can see just how quick and easy it is to just design and lay out the page, and then you can see what you're doing in real time with Beaver Builder, something I really like about Beaver Builder. So let's move on to the next section of our site. Um, so the next section is going to have a different color background to differentiate it, so we're going to use a dark gray or black background. So to do that, we just click on Add Content here again, and we click on Row Layouts, and we just do one column, so we're going to have a one-column section for this. And then our website color is already black because we configured that in the settings. Um, so we don't really need to actually change the background color. We can just go ahead and start working. So let's go ahead and add a setting to this. So we're going to go back over here into our little tool tray here. We're going to drag in a heading. We're just going to give it a name. Welcome to Special Effects. If you, again, if you wanted to have a link, you could add a, um, your link in right here. And then let's go ahead and adjust the settings. So it's already white because we already configured our settings for this to be white. Um, I'm going to change the alignment to center. And then let's change this to an H1 tag. Okay, and there we go. Now we can just click Save. And then let's um, add a little uh, flourish here underneath that. So we're going to go to Add Content. And this time we're going to add a icon group. So we're going to go to Advanced Modules, Icon Group. I'm going to add this in down here. And so these are going to put three icons in a row. So I'm going to use these little down arrow icons here. And if you wanted to have that link, you could do that. And just click Save. And then click um, Add an Icon to add another icon. We're going to add the same one. So that little down arrow right there. And then click Save. And do another Add Icon. Edit Icon. So there we go. Now we got these three nice little icons as a little uh, flourish on our website. And then the next thing we're going to do is just add some text below that. Click Add Content. And then Text Editor. Just drag that in right there. And then I'm just going to copy and paste some text in here. And then if we want to adjust the uh, text size or some additional settings besides these, you click on this little button here. It um, toggles the toolbar, or what's sometimes called the kitchen sink. And we can just highlight this whole thing and change it. So let's just change this to an H3 tag, make it a little bit bigger. You can also change it by using the font size. And then we're going to click on Save. 
I mean, I just love how quick and easy it is for the beaver builder to just make things that, you know, look great. Um, and it's really intuitive to use. As you can see, it's super easy. So the next thing I want to do is I want to do these three background uh, section here, or this triple background section here with these buttons below it. So let's go ahead and see how you do that. So to do that, we're going to um, add some content. We're going to do row layouts. We're going to choose three columns. And then we want to change, uh, right off the bat, we want to change the column settings. So we just click on the little uh, wrench icon there, and we want the row obviously to be full width, but we also want the content to be full width. That way it goes all the way across. And then we're gonna choose save. And so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna add the images to the, to the background of these sections. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the edit column button here, and then column settings. I'm gonna scroll down here. I wanna change the background type to photo. I'm gonna select a photo, upload a file. I'm going to use this dirt picture, which is 800 by 700 or 700 by 800. And then the other thing we want to do is we want to select this uh, item here for equalized column heights. And it's going to make it so that each one of these sections um, is exactly the same height. So no matter which what kind of text we put in there or whatever um, we do with these sections, they're always going to stay the same height, and that's going to help make it look a lot better. So change this to equalized column heights, yes, and then click on save. And then let's go ahead and add the image background for this middle column here. And you can see it's already changed the equalized column heights to yes. And then let's go ahead and change the background type to photo. I'm going to add a new photo in here. I'm going to use this fire photo, which is the same size. And then we're going to do this last column here. And we're going to scroll down, change the background to photo. Select the photo, upload the file. And then we're going to do save. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a button now to this section. So we're going to go to the basic modules here. I'm going to drag in a button. And I'm going to give the button a name. So we're going to just call it dust, since this is the dust section. If you want to have an icon, you could choose an icon. Then we're going to go over here to style. I'm going to choose a background color. Actually, the background color is already great. Um, hover color should be good also. And the text color is fine because we already configured those settings when we changed our settings. And let's change the width to full width so it spans the full width of our section there. And then let's make the font size a little bit bigger. Let's change the font size to 40. And then let's get rid of those rounded corners. I think it would look better without that. So we'll make that zero for the rounded corners. And that's going to take the rounding away from the corners. Okay, so uh, that looks pretty good. So we're going to click Save. Oh, we've got to have a link um, in here. So since I haven't created the page for this yet, we're just going to put in a hash as a place marker, and then we're going to click Save. There we go. And now we're going to just duplicate this button, so it's got all of the settings that we created, um, and I'm going to put it into each one of these other sections here. So to do that, you just click on this little Duplicate button here, which looks like two pages next to each other, and then let's do it one more time. So just put your cursor over the little cross arrow here, and we can just drag it to um, each of these different sections. And then we can click on it to edit it and just give it a different name. So we'll call this one Fire. Now we still have got the hash in there for the link. So of course when you create your pages that those go to, you can add those in there. And then we'll call this last one Snow. There we go. And now to get some additional height, so the buttons are at the bottom of these sections, we need to add another separator. So we're going to go to Add Content, um, Basic Modules, and then Separator. And we'll add a separator to each one. Um, and we're going to, the height, the maximum height you can put in um, in a separator is actually only 99 picks, and we want it to be larger than that. I think I want it to be about 400. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the style from, um, we're going to change the opacity to zero, so it doesn't take up, you know, uh, so it doesn't have any look to it. And we're going to go over here to advanced, and going to tape the, change the margins here to 400. And then we're going to click save. And I'm just going to add that separator module by using the duplicate button here. I'm going to add that separate, whoops, <laughs> add that separate module, module just by dragging it over here. I'm going to do another duplicate, and then just drag it over to the first one here. And there we go. Now we've got that look where we've got uh, three different backgrounds. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So to see what that looks like, we just click on Done up here. And we do Publish Changes, or you can do Save Draft, but um, I recommend just doing Publish Changes. And you can see um, already, very quickly, the look of our website um, is coming along nicely. We've got these full width sections here. We've got these buttons here. I mean, it's looking great, and you can just see how easy and fast it is to build websites with Beaver Builder. I really love it.
So let's add um, one more section uh, down below this here. I'm going to add a section um, with a the sort of deep red color. So to do that, we just click on Page Builder up here to get back to the Page Builder. I'm going to add a row layout, which is one column. Scroll down here and just drag it in below those items there. I'm going to change the background color this time um, under Settings. I'm going to do Background Color. I'm going to use this uh, red color from my color palette here. So I'm going to change the color here. I'm just going to paste in this color code that I've got. And I'm going to click Save. And then I'm just going to add some basic text in here. I'm going to add content. Drag in the text editor here. And then I'm just going to paste in some content that I've already written up. There we go. And you can see um, the text is dark here. And since we changed the settings in our theme already, uh, the color of our text is automatically white. So that's great. But you know what? Let's go ahead and change the font size of this a little bit. Probably should change the font size in my settings. So it's a little bit bigger. So let's go ahead and make this 20 pics. There we go. And then click on Save. So that looks great. And then let's go ahead and add another row uh, down below this. And we're going to do something a little cool. We're going to add um, a little colored triangle down below that so that it looks like this uh, section here is pointing to the next section when actually the color triangle is in the next section. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to do add content, row layouts. We're going to do a one column row right below this. And black is fine, which is our default uh, background color because we already set it. And let's go ahead and add that triangle here that looks like this section is pointing down to that section. So to do that, um, we actually use a photo. So I made a little triangle photo in Photoshop. I'm just going to drag that right in here. Go ahead and do select photo. So this triangle photo right here, which is just a down arrow, it's 150 by 100 pics. Um, it's a PNG, so it's got a transparent background. We'll do select photo. And then what we want to do is under advanced here, we want to change the top margin to zero. So that way it clips up um, next to this top row. We're going to click save. And then actually in this row here, we also need to remove the padding so that it just um, snaps right up in there. So to do that, we just click on the row settings here. Then under advanced, we click on the padding top and we change that to zero. Click save and check that out. So now it looks like this top section is pointing down to our, our, bot, our section right below that. So that's pretty neat. Okay, so let's add a separator down below there just to keep that sort of distinction um, there. So we're going to go to Add Content. I'm going to do a separator. I'm going to make the height 99. I think that should be enough. And this, we're going to change the opacity here to 0 so we don't see it. And then let's add some more content right below that. Add Content. And then we're going to add a heading. Put that right here. I'm going to just call this changes in real time. And we don't need a link, but let's make it quite a bit bigger. So we'll make it an H1 tag. And you know what? Actually, um, let's make it even larger than that. So to do that, we need to pick a font. So we're going to go with the light Lato font that we have here. And then I'm going to make it. Uh, let's make it regular. And then let's change the font size here also to custom. And let's try 150 and see what that looks like. Oh, that's way too big. Let's try just uh, just 100 on there. And I love the fact that you can actually see what you're doing as you're doing it. I, I can't I can't can't get over that. It's just it's one of the few builders in WordPress where you can do that. And it's really makes building websites much faster. Let's go ahead and make the alignment center on this. And then we'll click Save. All right, and then we'll add a little uh, bar underneath that. So to do that, we're going to use the separator again. So we're going to add content. Separator, and we'll just put that in right there. And let's make it a little bit thicker than that. Let's try three picks wide. There we go, that looks great. And let's make it a little bit darker than that, too. Make it like a darker gray. There we go. And then we'll just click on Save. And then we're going to add um, three columns right below that with some text. So to do that, we're just going to click on Add Content, Row Layouts, and we'll do three columns. And then we'll just do a text module in each one. So we'll do Text Editor here. And paste that in. And click Save. And then if you want to, you can actually just duplicate this and drag it over. 
and then duplicate this one and drag it over. And then if you had different text that you wanted to put in there, you, all you got to do is just click on it and then change the text. And you know what? I just want to change one more thing here real quick, which is just want to make the separator a little bit smaller. So let's make that 50. So there we go. So there's a great looking website that we made with Beaver Builder. You can see how fast and easy it is to do. Um, the last thing we need to do is just save our settings. So we click on Done, Publish Changes, and there we go. A great looking homepage built with Beaver Builder. As you can see, super easy to do. Next thing we need to do is create a menu for our website. And that's what we're going to do in the next section. So in this section, we're going to add a menu up here. Um, and this is basically the same way you would add a menu to just about any WordPress theme or website. So to get started, um, there's actually two ways we can do this. Um, first off, if you're following along with the tutorial, I did add some um, extra pages already to this theme. And you can do that in exactly the same way that we created this home page. Go ahead and add some um, a few dummy pages that we're going to use to add to our menu here. So to create a menu, you can either go up here to the Customize button when you're logged into the back end of your website. And then you can go down here to where it says Menus. And then you can do um, Main Menu, which is sort of your default menu location. Or if there's no menu uh, location up here, you can do Add Menu and then create a new uh, menu called Main Menu. And then you can just click on this. Um, and in this particular theme, it gives you these options of where you would like this menu to show up. In this case, we want it to be the header menu. Um, various different themes will have different options here. And of course, you can have this menu show up in different locations, or you can add uh, different menus that you can have in different places. And then to add an item to the menu, you can click here, Add Items. And then we've got uh, these different places where we can add items from. So we've got Posts, Pages, Categories, Tags. So in this case, I've created some pages. So if we click on Pages, I've added uh, these links here. So we can go ahead and just do Dust Effect, Snow Effect, fire effect. Uh, we can do blog also. And so those are what the pages look like and you can see uh, over here they've already started adding them to the menu. And one other thing you can do with menus in WordPress is if you drag these over just like this oops, and um, you can actually create a drop down menu. So let's see what that looks like. So we'll click save and publish and then now when we hover over dust and effects um, we get this drop down menu here. So let's go ahead and um, bring it back to the way it was. So let's just click over here and we'll just drag them back over. And you know what? I realized we didn't add a home page button, so let's go ahead and add that. So add that item. And we'll just set it to the home page. And we'll put this first. And then, of course, you can just reorder it by dragging it around. So this is the first way you can create a menu in WordPress. I'm going to go ahead and delete these items and let's look at another way. And if you wanted to save your menu, of course, you'd make, make sure you click Save and Publish at the top there. So if you're in your back end of your website in the dashboard, you can also go to Appearances, Menus, and then we've got the same um, sort of configuration here. We've got the main menu right here, so this is the menu we'd be editing. If you wanted to add a new menu, you'd simply click right here, which says Create a New Menu, but we already have one called Main Menu, so we're going to go ahead and use that. And then to add items to the menu, you just click on the items you want to add like this and click add to menu and you can see they appear here you can reorder them just like we did in the WordPress customizers and of course you can drag them across um, to have them show up underneath each other as a drop down and then of course you wouldn't click save menu when you're done and we can go back to the front end of our website there we go so now we've got a menu um, set up for our website. In the next section, I'm going to share with you an optional technique for making a header and menu section transparent in the Beaver Builder theme. In this section, we're going to add some custom code to our site to make the transparent header for our homepage. So to get started, the first thing we need to do is we need to grab a little bit of code. And I've got a link to the code um, down below in the description down below. Okay, so this is the code here. So all we need to do is we just need to copy it just like this. Go back to your website, and then we're going to use the Customize button right up here. So typically when you're modifying the code of a WordPress website, you need to make a child theme in order to be able to modify the code. But in this case, uh, Beaver Builder has added this code section right here, which actually stores the code that you add to this section right inside your database. So even if there's an update to the theme, it's not going to mess up or erase uh, this code here. So just go over here to CSS Code, and then just paste in that code that we added there and you can see um, it's already taken effect up here and it's it's done something uh, but we need to make a couple of adjustments to the settings here 
So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that this shows up only on the home page because we don't know what other kinds of pages we're going to create and we don't want to have a transparent header that doesn't work with the different pages that we might make in the future. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to add a dot .home tag to each of the different sections that are going to affect our header here. So we're going to just add just add the words dot .home and give it a space. And you'll know it's working because it's going to turn the sort of bluish green color here. And now the next thing you might need to do is you might need to adjust this margin top setting here or this margin top setting here to get the menu bar to appear where you want it to be. So the first thing that I noticed um, when I was trying to add this to my website is I actually had to take out this position relative section here um, because that was sort of messing everything up a little bit for me. Um, and then the next thing, so let's go ahead and delete that. So now that we've um, erased that and we've added all of those home tags, let's just go ahead and just verify what it's actually going to look like on our home page by clicking Save and Publish and then closing this. Okay, so there we go. That's pretty good. But to make this work well and make it look good, let's add some extra space above this fire and effects um, sign here. So to do that, we're going to kick on the page builder. And then above this fire and effects section here, we're just going to add one of the basic modules. We're going to add a separator. And then separator. And then you want to make sure that the separator is up here in that space above our fire and effects title. There we go, just like that. And then let's change the opacity to zero so that we don't see it. And then under advanced, let's make this 75 pix, just to give us a little bit of space up there. And then we'll click save. And so there we go. That is how you do a transparent header in the Beaver Builder theme. Now that we've got a transparent header, you might want to change the colors of your menu to be white so it's easier to read and maybe make the text bold. Um, and you can see how to do that in the section on how to configure the Beaver Builder theme and plugin. We can click Done here to save this. And if you're not comfortable with code and, and you tried this and it didn't work out, you know, don't worry about it. You can always go back to Customize, go over to Code, whoops, not Widgets, <laughs> go over to Code and CSS Code, and then just delete this code, and it will take away any of the changes that you make. Um, and then you can just go back to using the standard Beaver built-in uh, Beaver Builder header and menu section. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful, and for more tips and tricks that will help you build great-looking websites easily, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit me at realwebsitehints.com. Thanks for watching.